Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter. Capcom kindly provided me with a preview copy of the demo for Monster Hunter Rise for the PC. Allow me to get a kind of earlier look at the demo, which of course all of you guys will be able to very soon, if not already, uh, and try it out and let you know my thoughts ahead of time. So um, I'm gonna show you all the options here in display because this is what a lot of people care about. Um, but with a graphics card with eight gigabytes of graphics memory, which I think is pretty standard. Uh, I have the uh, GeForce RTX 2070S. I was able to put this thing on max and get 144 frames steady, 4K. <laughs> like there was nothing I can do in this game to make it go under 144 frames per second. Uh, and I tried everything. Um, so it's a very light game, I would say. It runs very well. So hopefully there'll be a lot of channels that will cover all the different, uh, you know, sort of setups that you might have. But just so you guys know, I am using an Intel i7-6700K, which is clocked at four gigahertz. I don't have any weird settings going on there because I just wouldn't know anyways. It's several years old and I am using SSDs um, as well as, again, the RTX 2070S, which is not a cheap card, but it's also not the most expensive one either. So uh, I did get to play it several times. I did notice if you are playing on a machine that's over like 60 frames per second, um, I was experiencing problems with the footage and I think you have to, at least on shadow play, record at the same refresh rate that you're trying to play it at, I guess I'm trying to say, because when I put the 144 Hertz gameplay and I'm recording at 60 FPS, it was all messed up. One thing the game does, which I am not personally a fan of, is it has this sort of uh, field of depth. What this does is going to look beautiful for photo mode, like especially in the town. But what it does is it just shifts like sort of like, you know, like your iPhone might shift focus from things that are close to the camera it can be really fuzzy or things in the background can be fuzzy. And it just gives it this kind of like, I don't know, like um, toy feeling. I don't, I don't know the best way to describe it, but personally not a fan, but you can turn it off. I was also not aware that the game has a natural vignette, which you can turn off to make the overall screen a little bit brighter, which is really nice. Um, I'm gonna show you the difference once I get to the top of the mountain here of what happens when you take the field of depth and you turn it on and off. I'm very happy that these types of options, which for some PC games that I've tried, they make you go back to like the title menu to change these options. This game just has them in there that you could change them during a quest. You can even change the aspect ratio and stuff during a quest, which I think is very cool because there might be opportunities or times where you want to turn things on or off, toggle it. I don't know. Maybe you're in a rampage and you realize that the settings were a little too aggressive for your PC. Um, this is one of the reasons why I don't like the field of depth um, because I'm trying to get a cute picture of this spider. Unfortunately, the camera mode's not integrated in the demo um, and it just becomes very blurry um, if you try to get a shot of it using this field of depth. Um, but I'll go to the top of the mountain first because I want to show you exactly why I don't like it besides the fact that when my hunter's really close, um, it, it tends to blur the hunter. So this is the uh, quickest way I know up the mountain, so to say. <laughs> ah, we're almost there. Um, I'm just so impressed by how this game runs. It is going to be a delightful treat for those who have patiently waited for it. So if you look in the background, it looks like you can see everything, right? And you can, like if there's a monster, you can see the monster, um, but it is a little blurry. Um, so when I go ahead here and I turn off the field of depth, which I'll do here, uh, you'll notice that it will become very beautiful and very in focus. This to me, I, I prefer it much better um, because it just allows you to see more information. And I think for a game like Monster Hunter, more information is a good thing. Unless you're going around, again, for photography things. So look at how crisp that looks now. Um, and you can see all the details, all the monsters down below, what they're doing, other players. Like, this, to me, is how I would prefer to play it. I got me mean, whatever they're doing with, like, the, the high-quality textures, this is not, like, nearly as taxing as something as Iceborne is. And you can tell it doesn't look as good. Um... But I think the thing here is that it looks good enough to say that it's worth playing on PC, especially if you waited for it, but it performs so well. Here's some texture work on uh, Pison, so we're going to go and hit him, ride him over to the Great Izuchi, and I'll show off a few of the other options. 
Again, no matter what I threw at this game, I was not able to get the frame rate to go any lower, and I'm on 4K. So honestly, I'm just kind of, I don't know where the lower limits are. I don't know how old your PC has to be for this thing not to run at 60, especially if you're using lower resolutions like 1440p or 1080p or stuff like that. So uh, look forward to other videos that, of people who can test that kind of stuff. But for me, it was kind of bittersweet. Um, this, I would have loved to play this game like from the get go with the performance that this has, um, which we just can't, unfortunately, because of the Switch. It doesn't mean that the Switch game was bad in any way, um, but this is just, it's on a whole nother level. Like, it just feels like a different game. Uh, in both a good way and a bad way. Um, Yuna actually was so impressed with it, uh, she immediately started asking about uh, cross save, or can we at least transfer our save data to PC? Um, and I said, I don't know, but we actually do know that at the time of this recording that Capcom did make an announcement saying that um, they noticed that people did express um, a quantitative interest in those types of features. Um, unfortunately for Rise, and I'm going to guess Sunbreak, but who knows, uh, they're not going to be able to do it um, for various reasons. They didn't go into the reasons. Some people were a little salty about it, but I think it has to do with, you know, they could do it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not like they made the game. Um, so obviously they, they can do it. The problem is, is that you just have your know, regulations. You've got DLC, which can be unlocked with save data. Do they want to expose the save data? They're using Nintendo servers and not their own. Do they really want to create an ID system to link people and do data validation? Are they afraid that the PC community is going to start going crazy with hacking and modding and that could jeopardize the Switch experience? There's probably a whole list of regulations, deals, and things that we're just not aware of. But the fact that now they have definitive proof that people are very interested in that feature, I think it's going to help them going forward because their COO just did like an interview saying that they're going to be focusing on PC as a major platform, uh, hopefully to take up like half their sales, um, you know, compared with console and handheld. So the fact that they're going to be focusing so heavy on PC, I'm very hopeful now that they have this data that they'll be able to take it into consideration moving forward. Um, personally, I would say if you have been waiting for this game, you're, it's going to be well worth the wait, especially with Sunbreaking coming day of. Um, if you think about double dipping, if you don't mind going in and playing again, I think you're going to have a great experience. Um, yeah, it's for me. I don't know what I'm going to do because I put in 750 hours on the Switch. So honestly, unless I had the ability to transfer, I don't think I'm going to uh, move over to the PC version. But I am seriously impressed. It's a little unfortunate that the demo um, only has like the nighttime and this map because I would love to see what the other maps look like. Uh, but you can do the Great Izuchi Hunt, which is why I chose that one, because you could see this map in the afternoon, which is a much better demo, I think, of the graphics than seeing this scene at nighttime with the other monsters. Anyways, let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of the demo once you get your hands on it. You know, how does it run? What's your setup? Stuff like that. I'll have my PC information in the link down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts. Um, I don't often play a lot of PC games despite having a gaming PC, uh, but this was a nice sneak preview. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and until next time, happy hunting in 144 frames per second.